everyone, and welcome to Discovery's Chats with Changemakers. I'm your host, Tiffany, a 10th grader in Texas, and each month I meet with different STEM professionals. Today I'm chatting with Maria, a research chemist and team leader at 3M. Maria, welcome. We are so excited for you to join us today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm going to ask Maria a few questions to get to know a little more about her. You can ask questions too by typing in your question in the Q&A box below, and we will save time to answer as many as we can. Also, be sure to stay tuned until the end of today's session when we will introduce a hands-on engineering challenge that you can try at home. So Maria, you're the first research chemist we've had on Chats with Changemakers. Can you tell us more about what a research chemist is and what you do at 3M? Excellent question. Um, so a chemist is someone who has studied chemistry and is working in the field. And a research chemist is where you apply your scientific method um, to really uh, test out a hypothesis. And in industry or in a corporate setting, we are gearing that um, scientific method toward new product development. So that's in, in, a, in essence who, what a research chemist is and what we do. That's cool that you use the scientific method because I've definitely learned about that in school. I, I figured you're touching upon that in your science classes right about now. <laughs> <laughs> so 3M makes a lot of products that we all use every day. Can you tell us what specific products you've worked on? Oh, great. Um, I've been so lucky to work on a lot of 3M products. Um, so 3M has products in the area of consumer business. Those are the ones you may have come across in the stores. And I have worked on some of them. Um, and then they have a lot of products that go towards like um, sort of a uh, converting step or used in intermediary steps in other industries. And so for example, I've worked on technology surrounding something that you guys would know, uh, post-it notes. I've worked on some of those technologies. And so um, really that translates and that knowledge into a lot of the other different products that 3M works on. That's so cool that you get to work on things that affect so many people like post-it notes. It does, it really does. So I know you probably use post-it notes quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So something I've always wondered about is like how you figure out the right amount of stickiness for a given product. Oh, wow, that's a good question. So that's in essence, how does it work? You know, how do you get this, the post-it note to stay up? And so that is in the chemistry of the adhesion of that adhesive. Um, pressure sensitive adhesives, what it stands for is, is over time, it builds more of an adhesion to that um, surface that you apply it to. And so how do we get it to stick? By very carefully designing and formulating that adhesive for that particular surface. And also take into account the environment that that adhesive will um, have longevity in. So is it gonna be a humid environment? Is it gonna be an extremely cold or dry environment? We take into account all those things in order to really design the right level of stickiness. Wow, I, I didn't know that so much to like uh, engineering and like chemistry goes into that one product. Oh, a lot, quite a bit, weathering, um, testing, um, numerous testing at different conditions over time. And so we call that exhilarated testing because you might want your sticky note to stay there, say between middle school and all the way to college. You wanna open up your old you know, diaries or notebooks and, and remind yourself, oh my gosh, I wrote this like you know, 10 years ago. And so you want that to still stay there. So we really take into account like timing and, and aging of things as well as again, the chemistry of it. Yeah. So 3M must have some giant manufacturing facilities for the products that they build. So, oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever visited one and what was it like if you have? Yeah, um, I have uh, been uh, fortunate to visit uh, 3M plants and factories and it's amazing to be able to, to enter the sites. Um, you basically see a lot of machinery and instruments working all in unison at the same time, churning out tons and tons of product. And also all the capable people that you meet who are now taking this one little concept, something that was in the test tube in the lab 
and translating that and scaling that up into just jumbos and jumbos of, of product. So it's been really cool and it's really interesting. If you ever get a chance to visit a factory or a manufacturing site, do it. Yeah, th that sounds so cool. I, I bet it was really amazing to see like the behind the scenes of all the different products and how they all come together. It is. It really is. It's a, it's a, it's a treat for, for someone who works in a laboratory to see the full realization of how that all pans out in real life, in real time. It's really neat. And it takes a lot of engineering to make all of that happen quite a bit. Yeah. So 3M seems like a really innovative company. So mm -hmm. can you describe the work culture and tell us what it's like to work there? Yes, um, so 3M is really, truly a unique company. It's, it's culture I will describe as innovative and collaborative. It is something, it is something that um, you, you envision when you're going to school of where you'd like to work someday. And it truly is what it is in reality at 3M. And so I think that um, the culture reflects the people. The people are extremely knowledgeable. They are very, you know, curious about science and chemistry, and they are just looking on how they can impact the world through their science, through their innovations, through their new novel ideas. And that creativity is on display every day in a very collaborative fashion. Yeah, so we have our first audience question. Miss Westfall's kindergartners want to know if you make things erupt or blow up. <laughs> not quite. I, I try not to blow anything up, first of all. My, <laughs> my science is not quite rocket science. <laughs> but um, I do try to make things stay together if they ever have to be in a position where they might break or, or fall and, and rupture. So um, I work very hard on the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> So has the way you do your job changed in any way due to the pandemic? Oh, that's yes. And um, it's it's a sombering uh, thought and a sombering question uh, because we've all had to truly adjust the way we go about everyday life. And at work, the same has occurred. We've had to take very, um, you know, uh, safety and cautious uh, measures in order to keep social distancing and also to protect ourselves by wearing masks. And so we do all those things and we're very much supported in, in those efforts. Yeah, I, I guess that's the case for a lot of industries now. It is, it is offices and schools and everywhere. It's, it's something that I think is across the board. So what is your favorite thing about your career? That I get to work with amazing people and I get to um, share my ideas that are supported and I can then see them through, through a lot of hard work, but also extremely rewarding and they do impact people's lives. They impact people's lives by making, making it easier to get, get through your daily life through the different products. And also I think that the work you do translates to more jobs in the industry. So if you come up with a concept that requires, you know, it to be scaled up in the factory, you now have a factory that's working full of people on scaling that product up. So you think of it as um, impacting people's lives and as well as jobs. So at 3M, it's, it's a company that offers a lot to, to a lot of different people. Yeah, I, I could see how that could make your job a great place to go to work every day. It does. So what does a typical day of work look like for you? Uh, so a typical day starts out with um, once I get into the office, I uh, turn on my computer. I go through a lot of emails. There's quite a bit uh, from the previous day as well as planning, planning my experiments for the day. And then my lab coat gets on and I'm at the bench working. <laughs> So you, you mentioned experiments, like what kind of experiments do you get to do? So I, I have to do a lot of um, synthesis experiments. So I, I make things. My background is in organic chemistry. I have a PhD in synthetic chemistry. And then also there's quite a bit of work in formulation where you then mix and match the different materials to get the most uh, optimum performance. And then there's a lot of testing as well. Yeah. So we have another audience question. 
Juliana wants to know how many hours it takes you to make a product and how do you improve products? Hundreds and hundreds of hours. Um, so a project can typically range from, I think a short one could be, if it's an improvement, maybe it can be as short as six months or so. Um, a development project where you take a new initial concept and bring it all the way to a feasibility stage could take up towards two to five years, depending wow. on how, yeah, depending on how many people are involved and just the, the size of the program. Absolutely. Yeah. So what other job specialties do you work with? Oh, so I work with so many many different backgrounds, um, technical backgrounds. So I work with people obviously like myself who are in the laboratory. I also work with people in business. And so we have to first also define a business case for a lot of our new inventions. I work with folks in legal and IP. So that's intellectual property. When we come up with new ideas, we wanna make sure that we protect them. And um, people in marketing, people in sales, people in manufacturing. Uh, we have to work closely with those who will end up taking this into in, and try to actually make it. So I end up working with so many different people with so many technical backgrounds. Yeah, that, that's so cool that you get to work with different people with so many different interests and skills. And I, I bet that's really cool and, and a great experience. I know it does. And I hope some of those capabilities rub off on me as I work with them. And I try to learn some, some other skills myself. <laughs> so in what ways do you think your job encourages you to be a change maker? Well, so I think that it is inspiring me to think outside the box each and every day. Um, when you start a program and you are you know, designing something specific, uh, next thing that happens is you start thinking, what about some adjacent industries? What about, um, you know, instead of just applying it to this one field or application, what would happen if we, we thought about a bigger area or just a different scope? And also then we start thinking about redesigning these materials. And I think that's where you start to get a, a serious shift in, in sort of what, what your trajectory can be of impact. And so that, that's how I think my work um, inspires me to be a change maker. Yeah, that, that's cool that you get to have such a big impact on so many different people. Yeah, it is, it's inspiring. So we have another audience question. Miss Becky's fifth grade class wants to know if you or your team has ever messed up on a project and that mistake actually made the product better. Ah, well, you know, serendipitously, you tend to sometimes uncover something you didn't expect or um, just sort of a experiment that yields a result that is going to be the next big product. And that has happened a few times. Now, some of that is protected by our IP, <laughs> but it certainly has been the case where um, improvements or new technologies have yielded surprising and interesting results that have directed us in new, new technical areas. Yeah, th that's really amazing. I'm sure that makes some really cool stories. It does. <laughs> so how did you decide that you wanted to be a scientist? I was always interested in science. Um, just growing up and in middle school, I enjoyed all the different subjects in science, chemistry, biology, physics, uh, math, and um you know, these days there's so many other disciplines within science that are so exciting. And so I, I, I was just naturally gravitated towards them and I'm glad that I was. Yeah, that, that's really inspiring for all of our viewers who might be really interested in science and want to pursue a similar career path. I think pursue. Um, they're going to find that science isn't just, um, it's really redefined what that can be today. 
Um, there's engineering aspect of science. Engineering is part of science. Um, you also have computer science, which is really breaking barriers in what one can do today as a data scientist and, and through coding. And so, and, and that actually translates into other fields, not just science. You could be in business or you could be in finance. And so you could take a, a scientific type of background and apply it to the arts or to business. So you can really take yourself in a lot of different directions and that those can be really exciting. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of options out there. <laughs> there are, <laughs> As a, there are many. <laughs> <laughs> so what strengths do you have that make you a good scientist? So I, I think it's being more on the being more on the analytical side and kind of taking the time to shift through the data, but also think um, carefully about how to design good experiments and and be patient and um, just give it time to work through what the hypothesis needs to to look like. And so that's something that I think is a strength in this. Yeah. Field. yeah. So when you were in school, what was a subject that was challenging for you? Um, so I think that challenging in the in respect to um, when things get hard and and many subjects could you know have a topic in them that's more difficult than the others. It's just to get some more help on that, get some more support, take some time to um, not give up too quickly, but you know, study a little longer, give yourself a break and to come back to it and keep at it. And that's how I think that um, whenever I did have any challenges, I was able to overcome them by just giving it a bit more time and a bit more work. Yeah, that, that's good advice. So yep. it's important to try new things, even if they're hard. Can you tell us about a time that you failed at something and what you learned from the experience? Uh, let's see. Um, I think that um, looking at programs or projects or even in graduate school, I had projects that um, the, the ideas that we had um, devised, you know, my professor, our team, his research group, myself, were, were not sort of yielding the results that we expected. And so what we ended up doing is learning how to pivot you know, efficiently, effectively, and not maybe just completely walk away. And learning from that is to not maybe just walk away from that program entirely and start a new one, but taking the aspects of it that did work and doing a pivot to now redefine a new direction that is not obviously the planned one, the initially planned one, but to sort of scope out a new path. So you you don't feel like the time you spent on it is wasted and that can still be reflected in a positive light. Yeah, that, that's awesome that you you don't waste any failures. You, you've always used them. You build to upon them. Yeah. Yes, you build upon them, exactly. Yeah. So we have another audience question. Christopher wants to know if you've worked on any products related to masks for protection from COVID or other work environments. Ah, mask protection is extremely important and 3M does a fantastic job of maintaining and sort of innovating in that business. Um, I, I haven't worked recently in the mask business, but I know many, many people who do and they are amazing. They are the frontline researchers who are making sure that we all stay protected. Yes, that's really important. Oh yeah. So what is one piece of advice that you would give kids who think they might wanna be scientists when they grow up? I think as I, I think I mentioned before, um, stay with it, you know, um, enjoy it. Again, you know, give yourself a break if you come across some topics or subjects that are a little harder than others. The field is becoming more and more diverse. You will find that um, you could find your niche in the area that you have a passion for, you know, quite readily. And yes, you, you, you should pick up some skills that are necessary. And again, if they are challenging, just work through them, give yourself some more time, get some extra, you know, study help for them. Everyone understands because 
learning new things is not trivial. You know, if it was easy, everybody would just, you know, there would be nothing to invent because everything would be done just at the snap of the fingers. So um, stick with it and enjoy it. And you'll find that you could have a great, interesting career. So what would you tell kids who aren't so sure about STEM careers or who maybe think that they're not cut out to be a scientist? Um, I think give it a shot. Um, I think, uh, you know, going to school is a time of learning and you learn both subjects and you learn about yourself. And if it turns out that you have strong interests in other areas, that's, that's great too. Um, that path of, of enjoying what you learn is very important in what you'll end up doing as well. So you want to be true to yourself, but you want to also give yourself the chance to truly explore all your options. So don't, do not dismiss science, give it a fair shot, but follow also what your dreams are and your passions. Yeah, that, that's really inspiring. Yeah. So I have a couple fun and random questions to end us off. <laughs> so if you could have any superpower what would you choose and why ah oh, wow there's so many i would like <laughs> so i think that um i i truly have compassion and and empathy and and i would like some kind of superpower where um people could feel better and 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 help heal you know and so that would be my my superpower like a superpower nurse <laughs> So that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so what is something we wouldn't know just by looking at you? Do you have any hidden talents or interests? I have a lot of interests. I, I, I like to read. I don't know if that's, that's not quite a talent, um, but I think that I, I really enjoy um, spending time with friends and family and really making sure that everyone is, is connected and feeling just very comforted and and sort of um centered because i think that as life gets more busy everyone just gets a lot caught up in what they need to do and so being able to just make sure that everyone is able to feel safe and happy and connected makes us all better in our jobs and our daily in and in our daily lives definitely so when you were a kid who was your role model and why Oh, so I think in, in, in my personal life, I would say my, my family, my parents, my mom, and um, in, in terms of um, in, in academic life or when I would think about, I would think about um, sort of the scientists that came before us, you know, in time, those that pioneered and all the inventions that we build upon today. So there's there's so many to pick from, but there are a lot of famous women scientists that, you know, at in their times, it was probably a lot more challenging for them to pursue, you know, careers in science. And so I, fi I find those role models truly inspiring. Yeah, it's, it's so great that we can learn from the, our history and the people before us. Yes, those that come before us, we stand on their shoulders, absolutely. So our final question is, what's something you've done in your life that you're really proud of? Um, I'm, I think that I'm really proud of working hard. Um, I think that uh, a lot of things just don't come quite easily to people. We have to work on it. It takes practice. It's almost like you could think of the analogy of public speaking. Um, a few people have just that natural, you know, extrovert personality and it's, it's, it's just flows. And many of us have to work hard on it. And, and that's something that I think I'm, in terms of my career and, and a lot of things, um, just to be able to uh, acknowledge that one needs to focus and be dedicated and that resilience um, and be proud of it. Yeah. So I believe that that's all the questions we have time for today. So Thank now you. it's time to introduce our hands-on challenge. Let's watch this Discover Engineering Challenge video featuring Maria. Hi all, my name is Maria Pinney. I am a research chemist at 3M and I lead a team that makes materials we use every day. Materials that are made to stick like a post-it note or scotch tape and to not stick. So, Today, I have a sticky design challenge for you. 
make and test your own glue. If you've used different types of glue, you may have noticed that they have different degrees of stickiness. Some glues can hold a very heavy object onto a wall, while other glues hardly stick at all. The first step to the sticky glue challenge is to make your own glue. You can find the list of ingredients and student instructions on Discover E website. You will use the engineering design process to test your homemade glue and compare it to at least two other types of glue. You can choose the white or clear glue you use in school or rubber cement or maybe try wood glue. Here are the supplies you will need for your glue testing station. Scissors, paper plates, six of those, one paper cup, a piece of string, eight large paper clips, and pennies. Once your glue is ready, it's time to set up your testing station. Start by cutting a test strip out of the middle of a paper plate. Attach a paper clip to each end like this. Make three test strips. Now attach a test strip to a new paper plate with the glue you made. I recommend using a half teaspoon of glue. Let the glue dry for one or two minutes. You will make one test plate for each type of glue. While you wait for your glue to dry, you will build your own weight holder using a cup, two paper clips, and one piece of string. Now it's time to test your glue's tensile strength. That's the strength of the glue as it holds a weight that's pulling down on it. You will attach the paper cup weight holder to your testing strip plate and carefully add pennies as weights. How many pennies did the cup hold before the glue gave away? How does your glue compare to two other glues? Once you test all three, think about how you can make improvements to your glue. Do you want to make changes to your glue recipe or try a new one? Do you want to test your glue on different surfaces? Rather than a paper plate, use a plastic plate or the cover of a magazine. The last step to the design process is to share your results. Let us know how you did. You can email photos to Discover E or post on social media using the hashtag Discover E Challenge. Now, go have fun. I hope that you all will try this Discovery Challenge and be sure to share your results with us. Thank you, Maria, for introducing today's challenge and for joining us today. Thank you, Tiffany. It was wonderful spending time with you. And thank you, everyone. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. When you leave today, please fill out our survey. And be sure to join us for our next Chats with Changemakers. Tune in on Friday, April 30th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time when we will chat with Ben, a project engineering designer at Bechtel. Until next time, I hope everyone has a great time trying the Discovery Challenge.